This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Good evening to you at 6 o'clock. We begin with a home invasion caught on camera. Armed robbers broke into a home on Indianapolis' southeast side overnight. RTV6's Stephanie Wade talks with a family who was home at the time and steps you can take to make your home a little safer. A neighbor tells me he heard it all happen. He saw a car pull up with five men inside. They asked each other, which house do you want to hit? They got their guns and broke into this home. You're just trying to hope that you do what they say and they leave. Frightening moments for this southeast side family. They came in and said, don't move, you know, show me your hands. Um, one of them immediately came over to me and started, you know, just grabbed my phone off my desk, my wallet. Three men caught on a neighbor's surveillance camera dressed in all black broke into Josh Smith's home near Acton and Mays Road. While he, his wife, two kids, and mother-in-law were all inside. People look for opportunities, easy opportunities. They saw the garage door up. It was easy for them just to walk right in. Police say they broke in through the garage door that was accidentally left open. Two others waited outside while the three ravaged through the home, stealing mostly electronics, phones, an iPad, and an Xbox. They had the hoodies drawn down real tight around their face, so really you could only see their eyes and just a little bit of their nose. Luckily, wife and kids were asleep in the bedroom, but the dogs were in there with them. Uh, we have a gate to kind of keep the dogs either in or out, depending on what we want, and they saw the dogs and didn't go in there, so it was kind of lucky. No one was hurt, but shaken nonetheless. The video was recorded, so we're able to get that and use that for investigatory purposes. IMPD says surveillance cameras or ring doorbell cameras are extremely useful when trying to catch these criminals. Neighborhood Crime Watch and Facebook groups are also helpful to let people know if they see anything suspicious in the area. Get to know your neighbors. Um, if you make any large purchases, break down the, the packaging, throw that away, make sure that's not sitting on the street curb. From now on, this family says... Double checking our locks and garage door. We're probably looking at getting a security system back in place. Stephanie Wade, RTV6. And if you know anything about this robbery or recognize the suspects, call Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS. New at 6, an Indianapolis man has just been found guilty of murdering his uncle. Larry Spivey will be sentenced later this month for the December 2017 shooting death of Albert Ford. Officers found the victim lying in front of a home on Newburgh Avenue on the city's east side. Witnesses said in a family dispute in the front yard led to that shooting, Ford shot his uncle in the back and ran away. Police tracked him to Chicago two days later. Taking a look outside now from our Weather Now cameras, nothing much to keep you from going out this evening, but our rain chances will increase for the weekend. So we're gonna get right over to Kyle Mounts for your outlook. Hey, Kyle. Yeah, they are going to increase, but we're gonna have some dry time in that weekend forecast for you as well. But it is a beautiful Friday evening across central Indiana. Our temperature, 81 degrees. We've had that east to northeast breeze today, and that is really taking a bite out of the humidity. It's only 35% for us right now, and we'll see that sun setting about 10 after nine. Temperatures with some sunshine, you're at 79 in Lafayette, a little more in the way of cloud cover in Columbus, still in the lower 80s. And check out off to the northwest, Minneapolis and Sioux Falls, close to 90 degrees. But we look to the southeast and we see rain and some cooler temperatures with numbers in the 70s. And actually, a little bit of a reversal here because this rain and cloud cover is going to be spiraling back our direction instead of our weather typically moving from west to east. So we are going to see those showers moving in as we go into the day tomorrow. This evening though, 79 degrees for you at 7 o'clock. We'll find those temperatures getting into the upper 60s by 11. Still a little breezy, but we're still dry as well. Down to 64 with partly cloudy skies for you and that east breeze tonight. And there's a check of those rain chances. 30% tomorrow does jump up a little bit on Sunday. A closer look at that timeline in a few minutes. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Kyle. Central Indiana is failing when it comes to helping victims of sexual assault and domestic violence. Well, that's according to victim advocates who say communities need more resources and in turn, that could help solve more crimes. Call 6 investigates Kara Kenny headed to one town trying to fill the void and learn the idea may spread to other communities. When a victim comes to a police station to file a report, the criminal justice process can be confusing and overwhelming. The town of Brownsburg wants to change that. 
Morgan Colley is the new victim advocate with the Brownsburg Police Department. The more you engage with the victim, the more you make them feel heard. It's a first of its kind role for Brownsburg and for police agencies in Hendricks County. Morgan will serve as a tour guide of sorts for victims of crimes with an emphasis on sexual assault and domestic violence, guiding them through the criminal investigation process. Victims have lots of questions and my role serves as a guide for them to provide resources and just kind of serve as their voice. The newly created role will free up detectives to focus more on solving crimes. She's going to be a big, big part of this team that's going to be just, I mean, seriously, it's going to be a game changer for us. Hendricks County, like many counties, has victim advocates at the prosecutor's office, but that doesn't help victims until charges are filed and sometimes charges are never filed. So for us to be able to have someone like Morgan in between times so that we can focus on trying to bring forth justice for these victims, that's just exponentially amazing to us. The Indiana Coalition for Crime Victims' Rights applauds Brownsburg's efforts. Founder Lael Hill is working to get other police departments to do the same. She says many central Indiana communities are seriously lacking in services for rape and domestic violence survivors. I would love to see more uh, services specifically addressing sexual violence in some of these donut counties like Hendricks, uh, Putnam, and things like that because people should really be served in their own community, in their own town. They shouldn't have to drive to Indianapolis for services. The coalition is working to add more services to donut counties like sexual assault response teams as well as rape crisis centers. Hopefully in the future we'll see uh, justice, we'll see more convictions, and we'll see less crime. Morgan started her position May 13th. Our main goal is just to make sure everyone cl is collaborating and that we can provide the best wraparound service for victims possible. In Brownsburg, Kara Kenny, RTV6. Well, police say Morgan's role is at no additional cost to taxpayers as a result of restructuring some other positions. An Anderson police officer whose father is the police chief is accused of breaking into a woman's home and attacking her. Officers arrested Adam Waters today at the home of police chief Tony Waters. The investigators say Adam Waters was off duty when he went to the woman's home early this morning and entered without permission. They say he beat the woman and then left the home when the police were called. Waters is on administrative leave without pay, pending action by the Board of Public Safety. Some Franklin Township residents say they are tired of being told they're low priority when it comes to getting their sidewalks repaired and replaced. RTV6 went to Southern Ridge Subdivision and listened to their concerns. 78-year-old Judy Nicholson fell down and sustained injuries to her face because of the bad sidewalk. Jerry Main says it's a major chore to pull a wagon down those challenging, uneven, and cracked sidewalks. She showed us emails from as far back as 2012 that indicated their sidewalks were not bad enough to warrant attention. When you're told, you know, sorry, it's been six years, but you're still on the low priority list. We have higher priorities that we're taking care of right now. Um, it's very frustrating because as a homeowner, what are you supposed to do? We can only let so many accidents happen um, until we call Channel 6 for help. The Department of Public Works released a statement saying with an extensive backlog of service requests from across Marion County, many of which represent sidewalks that are much further deteriorated than those that have been reported near this location, it is not certain when our crews will be able to address needs of this priority. However, City County Councilor Brian Mowry, who represents that district, told us he will continue to fight to get those sidewalks repaired. A man is thanking RTV6 after his roof has now been replaced. He lives on the Sherman Oaks Condominium complex there on the south side. His roof had a hole in it and he was getting nowhere with management to replace it or fix the problem. Weather was only worsening the issue, so he reached out to RTV6 for help. Last week, we contacted the Sherman Oaks management and Tuesday, they fully replaced the roof. RTV6 getting results tonight following our story last Friday on a man who had been trying to, for years to get his condo association to replace his collapsing roof. Having a job can help break a drug habit. Next in Hiring Hoosiers, a grant program that hopes to help break people of opioid addiction by keeping them employed. And no, not Erica Fly. No, but we do continue to share memories from 70 years of working for you. Tonight, former anchor Erica Fly on the sports story that really made an impact on her.
It's three games and five nights for the Fever, but they're all here at home. I'm Brad Brown. We're live at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. Dallas is the opponent tonight. We'll have a preview of tonight's matchup coming up in sports. And if you're thinking about putting off that yard work for the next couple of days, you may not want to do that. may want to get out there this evening as we have some dry weather because those rain chances, they do go up a bit for the upcoming weekend. We'll talk about how much, what weather to expect. You're watching RTV6 News at 6. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Helping Hoosiers stay hired. That's the goal behind a grant awarded to the Indiana Manufacturers Association. The RXB's Leadership Initiative, or Rally, will equip Indiana's largest industry with new resources in its response to opioid misuse and the addiction crisis. With this money, Rally Indiana and the IMA will create a digital toolkit specifically designed for manufacturers to offer guidance on how to identify and address substance misuse. And the employees who receive help will not be in danger of losing their jobs. These employers, the reality is they're going to see an unusual activity as it relates to their employees probably first, you know, whether they show up to work late or they're missing assignments. And so this toolkit will help the employers uh, identify the problem with the employees and get them to help so that they can stay employed and still be an active member of society. These toolkits are currently rolling out into Indiana manufacturing companies statewide. For more info on how Rally Indiana and the IMA is responding to the opioid epidemic, head to HiringHoosiers.com. Sports have played a big part of the history of Channel 6 here. It all started on day one, May 30th, 1949, when we aired the Indianapolis 500 live. Since then, we've been there to witness and share with you countless athletic achievements, big and small. Well, former anchor and reporter Erica Fly draws on the Colts for the story that stands out for her in 18 years at WRTV. The biggest local news story in my eyes was news and sports. It's when the Colts went to the Super Bowl in 2007 because I was assigned to cover the story. So I got to go to Miami and not only did I get to see the Colts win the Super Bowl, which I'm a huge Colts fan, but I'm a huge Prince fan and Prince was the halftime show. So we were there for weeks, for a week and it was the best experience ever. Fans aren't about to slow down and wait for the Super Bowl on Sunday. There's simply too much to see and do. We covered stories. We were on the air all the time. We were with the fans. We were talking to the team. We actually got to sit and see the Super Bowl and see Prince perform at halftime. Prince sang Purple Rain in the rain. So no one cared that it was raining. It was the perfect setting. <laughs> it was one, that's like the best story I've ever covered. And my whole career, that's the one that stands out. Well, look at that. And to watch all of our 70th anniversary stories and our one-hour special, head to the IndieChannel.com and click on 70 Years Together at the top of the homepage. The special will also be rebroadcast Sunday at 4 o'clock right here on RTV6. That's a fun one. Isn't that a great one? Yeah. Good to hear from Erica there about her story that stands out there. So now let's talk about a college football team that really knows how to score big with young fans. IU football coach Tom Allen and some of his players visited Riley Children's Hospital today. A chance to share some time with the kids there. Basketball, mini golf, video games, great play area over there for the patients at Riley. Coach Allen calls this a winning scenario for the kids and the players. Well, I think it's critical that uh, they understand that it's, uh, you know, things are not about them. And there's a lot bigger uh, picture out there than beyond, beyond the football field. And, and obviously they've been given a tremendous a privilege and opportunity to play the great game of football and be collegiate athletes. But uh, I want our guys to understand that uh, they have to really invest in others and make, uh, make that a priority in their lives. And when they do, it adds value to themselves and to the people around them. So that's kind of like the biggest thing is just knowing everything they're going through and they still have a smile on their face. So when we have our hard Friday Friday lift workout you know it's really not that bad and we can always you know take take some advice from them just always have a smile on our face no matter how hard it gets about 20 IU players were at Riley today it's just one of their community service projects chosen and organized by the players themselves good to see big and small there right mm -hmm. Mayor Joe Hogsett was among those taking a different route to the office this morning for the eighth consecutive year it was canoe to work day on the White River it was launched to highlight the role of water in shaping the community but it has since grown into an initiative to encourage people to explore the water and help preserve its beauty
And a beautiful day to be out there and near some of the water here in central Indiana. We've got temperatures right about where they should be. Upper 70s, lower 80s. We're at 81 downtown in Columbus, 84 in Muncie, and 79 in Lafayette. There you can see a little more sunshine over the northwestern half of the state. We get back into that cloud cover as you work your way toward Columbus, Seymour, and Bedford, where you even had an isolated shower earlier in the day. That's where we'll have an isolated shower chance here for the next couple of hours. But most of us are going to stay dry tomorrow morning. We'll have those temperatures in the middle 60s and we'll have the clouds around and also a few scattered showers back in the forecast. Those temperatures making their way into the middle 70s by noon tomorrow, but they kind of level off from there. Upper 70s to around 80 degrees as we're going to have the clouds around and occasionally some scattered showers. Your high temperature 79 in Bloomington, around 80 degrees in Indianapolis and Columbus and 81 degrees in Lafayette. So this isn't rain that you need to be canceling your plans for. It's just one that you need to be planning for. So as this might interrupt your plans just a little bit, make sure you got that storm shield app while the severe weather threat's very low. That way you'll have radar and know exactly where that rain is falling or where it's heading. And it will be coming from a bit of an unusual direction, more of a southeast to east direction and moving back to the northwest and west. By noon tomorrow, some scattered showers. Again, not everyone's going to be dealing with the rain all day long here. And even by seven o'clock tomorrow evening, some hit and miss showers. If you're going to be out there tomorrow, some of the many festivals, make sure you still use the sunscreen, even though we've got quite a bit of cloud cover around that UV index in the high category, a six on the scale there. And Sunday, we've got more showers and storms in the forecast. And I would say on Sunday, it looks like our rain coverage will be a little bit higher here with temperatures starting off in the mid to upper 60s and once again, making their way into the upper 70s. Here's Truecast for you. This is eight o'clock Sunday morning. You can see that we've got some scattered showers kind of get a little bit of dry time into the early afternoon before some more of that rain builds in, especially over the eastern portion of the state as we head into our Sunday evening. Most areas we're talking about less than a half inch of rain, but you get under a couple of these thunderstorms and you could pick up over an inch of wet weather. So we'll watch out for some isolated flooding issues here as we go through the weekend. Seven day planning forecast as we put it all together here for you. And on Monday, we'll carry on with that chance for a few showers and storms. But look at these temperatures, not very late spring, early summer like here instead of going through the 80s we'll fall back into the 70s here 75 will be the high Monday and Tuesday some dry weather there Tuesday and Wednesday for us before we get back into another chance for some wet weather on Thursday that system may actually keep us a little bit cooler as we get some cloud cover around highs may not get out of the 60s there and the end of next week looking pretty good right now a week from today mostly sunny and 73 oh let's get to next Friday then all right, we got a good weekend <laughs> ahead of us, though. Thanks, Don't write Kyle. this one off. The Indiana Fever are starting the weekend with a home game tonight. Brad Brown joins us live from Baker's Life Fieldhouse with a look at that one. Hey, Brad. Mark and Amanda, good evening. Start of a busy stretch for the Fever. They'll play three in five nights. It starts here this evening with the Dallas Wings in town. Indiana's won two out of three to start the season. Now, both of those wins happen to have come against New York, but it's still a two and one start. If they win tonight, the three and one start would be their best since 2012. That's a championship season for the Fever here just seven years ago. Take it back to last Saturday. It's been six nights since the Fever had a game. It was that second matchup against New York. 92 points on the board for the Fever. That's going to be a number they'll struggle going to match up with this as season goes on, but if they can keep scoring like that, they're going to have themselves an opportunity to win more games than many people expected. Kelsey Mitchell led the way with 23 points last Saturday, three other players in double figures. Had a chance to talk a little bit earlier with Fever head coach Pokey Chapman about his, what is most improved with her team in these first couple weeks of the season. We talked about it, and every coach talks about it, it's the defensive effort. Uh, you know, Obviously, early in the season, you're trying to figure some things out offensively, get a little bit of rhythm and flow, so it's nice that you can play those top seven, eight, nine players and not lose anything on a defensive end. Having six days off between these couple of games here, good or bad, what do you take away from that? Good. We're young. We can practice. Uh, we're trying to implement a lot of new players. So it gives you some time with those young ones uh, to get some reps. Two more at home for the Fever in this four-game homestand. Sunday afternoon, a 4 o'clock game against Phoenix. Then Seattle will come here on Tuesday night. A good look at one of the best teams in the West. Let's get a look at the Pacers for the third straight day, holding pre-draft workouts across the street here at St. Vincent Center. One of the spotlight players this afternoon was Michigan big man Izzy Braz Iggy Brazdikas. Played just the one freshman season up there. It was a beast in the Big Ten, though, earning all-conference honors. Six foot seven, 221 pounds. Seems to have the kind of body and the kind of skill set that could benefit an NBA team. 
It's been a lot of fun. You know, I love I love competition and I love these kind of workouts where it's, you know, three guys and, and three guys and we all play, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, two on two, three on three. And I think that's kind of where I thrive a little bit and, and that competitiveness, it kind of shows, you know, in me. So uh, it's a lot of fun. It's tiring, the travel, everything, but it'll be worth it at the end. And we got hoops for you tonight on RTV6. It's game four of the NBA Finals, Raptors and Warriors. Toronto trying to take a commanding 3-1 lead in the series. Gold State looking to even things up. Pre-game NBA countdown at 8.30 with the game just after 9 o'clock. We'll be here when it's done for a late edition of the news at 11. And how about some racing tonight? USAC's Indiana Midget Week goes to Bloomington Speedway. They're just getting started down there. Tanner Thorson was the winner last night over in Putnamville. He's finished second, fifth, and first. Looking right now like maybe the favorite to take the Midget Week title. They will continue tomorrow night in Lawrenceburg and on Sunday at Kokomo Speedway. Also this evening, IndyCar will be getting to qualifying in Texas. That's getting started here in just a few minutes. And the Indians are on the road in Toledo as well. We'll recap all of it for you coming up tonight after Game 4 of the NBA Finals. Time for one more break. Back to the studio to wrap up the news at 6 next. Best signature lattes. America runs on Duncan. And the weekend is here. We head into it with some comfortable temperatures. Highs around 80 degrees both days, but we've got the chance for some showers and storms again. Our severe weather threat is going to be very low. Could have some pockets of heavy rain, though, that we'll be watching out for, so make sure you avoid those. All right, and that does it for us here on RTV 6 News at 6. Join us again for the news at 7. We'll see you then.